Uh, hi, this is a video I'm going to show most of my chip collection. This is the stuff that I could get in these boxes. I have a few other things here and there that are not in the boxes, but this is this is most of the stuff. Um, let's see, we'll talk about some of the more interesting things I got. Down here we have a uh, couple Intel 4004s. They're the less exotic looking gray ceramic variety. Um, the, the more highly collectible ones are earlier and have white ceramic and the earliest ones have a, have a gray trace, gray traces on them. Um, so yeah, up here we got, got a couple different bubble memories. The first one on the left is a uh, Intel 1 megabit 7110-1. Um, it is a variety that has the leadless, the leadless carrier instead of having the through hole pins. Um, the one next to it does have through-hole pins. It's a Texas Instruments. I think it's a 94 or 96 kilobit. Um, I'd have to look that up. Uh, we got here a Hewlett Packard white and gold uh, ceramic uh, leadless carrier, some kind of processor of some sort. No idea what. HP stuff is pretty hard to find information on if it's proprietary parts they didn't sell to anybody else. And most of their big semiconductors like that they kept to themselves. Um, got a couple couple late 80s, early 90s specialized Intel microprocessors, the i8-16, i9-60. Um, down here we have some Intel x86 leadless support chips right there. Matter of fact, I think one of them may be a, let's see, I think one of them is a 286 or something. I don't know. There was like a R8206 and a, or C8206 and a C8207. Those are both like, I think 286 support chips, but don't quote me on that. Got a couple, uh, Hewlett Packard, uh, older Hewlett Packard uh, dips right there, ceramic and gold. One of them's gray trace with white ceramic, and that one's just plain white ceramic. It's got a gold ground strap on it. Uh, once again, have no idea what those are because they're Hewlett Packard. Um, now here we got some uh, got some Fairchild um, 1103s. That's a clone of the Intel 1103, of course. And we have some AMD 2903 three bit slice processors and one of their support chips, the AM2960 DC, which is a uh, which is a error detection and correction unit. It takes a takes a bunch a bunch of 2903s to make a computer out of it because they only do four bits of work each. Have some interesting RCA white ceramic chips. I think there's an Opera amps or or, or uh, TTL. I don't remember. But they're, uh, they're white ceramic with round cavity lids, which is pretty unusual. Um, let's see. have some Intel 4004 support chips right there. That is the 4002 RAM. Um, I think I got some Dash 1s and some Dash 2s, yeah. Uh, let's see. I got, got a box of some more boring stuff. We're just going to skip over that. Um, down here we have... Those three white chips right there, let me get to where you can actually see them. Those three white chips right there are the Mostec R1200 calculator chipset. The top two uh, perform various processing functions, and we believe the bottom one is a, is a printer controller. You only see that in models that have printers instead of, instead of like actual displays. Um, they, are, they were socketed. They were pulled out of the calculator. They were not, not desoldered, and that's pretty unusual to see for these chips. Usually these chips are soldered in. Um, got some more AMD 2903s right there, only they have the, the black ceramic cavity lid instead of the gold, or I'm sorry, silver cavity lid that the other ones have. Got two different variants of the Mostec MK38 P70. That's a development variant of the MK3870, which is a single chip implementation of the 3850, the F8 microcontroller, um, which was made by Fairchild. Uh, the top one is designed for accepting a 24-pin EEPROM, like a 2716, you know, common stuff. Or the bottom one, and the bottom one is, is for 28-pin EEPROMs. And we have another piggyback over here. This is a Zilog Z8602RS. It's a microcontroller. I think it came originally came out of like a some sort of Apple computer. Um, this one has a uh, more conventional plastic dip socket that's just sort of grafted onto the top with that offset cavity lid. That's its unusual feature. The, uh, the piggyback sockets on the Moss Tech, they actually invented piggyback sockets. Um, the, uh, they are actually brazed directly into the ceramic package. 
Um, up here we got some box of EPROMs. Uh, nothing terribly exciting. Got a couple white ceramic uh, Intels. What are those? Uh, I can't. 2716s. That's what they are. Okay. So yeah, you could jam one of those in that 24 pin 38P70 I just showed. Um, got some more here. Some of them gold lids. Uh, most of them are, you know, 2716s, 2708s, stuff like that. Down here we have some interesting Intel stuff. Mo moderately interesting. Um, got a uh, pre-production 8035 microcontroller right there. That's that purple one with the with the black glass cavity lid. Um, we have few more Intels over here. These are all various 40-pin Intel microcontrollers. They had a couple different series on the MCS-51 and so forth. Um, and here's by far the most interesting chip in this box. If I can get to where we can see what they are. Well, let's see. How about right there? Okay, we have two 1101s. Those are Intel 1101s. The top one is a gray trace on ceramic, and that would be the first chip that Intel ever made. Not this particular chip, but the that type of chip, the Gray Trace 1101. Um, here we have a bunch of gold lidded ROMs from some sort of IBM mainframe or something. I don't know what they're from exactly, but some of them are marked IBM and some are Motorola. Um, got some Cypress microcontrollers right there. Those are all leadless microcontrollers. And next to them we have these strange guys right here. They are some sort of some sort of unusual package. They have a really heavy heavy gold leads. I um, have no idea what they are. We have some made by uh, Motorola and some made by Western Electric, which is an unusual manufacturer to see on a chip. Um, let's see. Down here we have a couple mystery chips. These are some sort of AMD, maybe they're a ROM or something, we don't know, but they are a very early date code, 1972, which is really early for Intel, or I mean, I'm sorry, AMD, and like maybe a year after they began production, and they have a gold and white ceramic sandwich uh, dip, gold pins, and a gold cavity lid. Got two of them, have no idea what they are. Um, got a couple more Intels over here, those are, those are ROMs. Um, basically, an EEPROM with no window for all intents and purposes. Uh, let's see. Over here we have some various Texas Instruments microcontrollers mixed in with some other other 40-pin microcontrollers and like peripheral interface controllers and stuff like that. And a couple of them have EEPROMs built in, or just one in that box does, I guess. So that would be a development microcontroller right there. Made by Texas Instruments. And... That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.